for tuning in. Today, I'm going to be continuing on my series of weird stuff that I made with the Arc Equalizer. It's an EQ that I made about eight years ago. It was a one-off, sort of a prototype. It sounds really smooth and it's very graceful, but it has some pitfalls, which is probably why I never made another one. What inspired this were two products. One was from a company called Thermionic Culture. They had an equalizer. They probably still sell it. It's a passive EQ that didn't have an amplifier in it, and it didn't have a power supply. So because of that, it was very inexpensive when you compare it to other passive EQs on the market. Because it didn't have the amplifier built in, the way that you have to use it is you connect the output to a mic preamp, and then the EQ takes on the sonic characteristics of the mic preamp because the amplifier is where a lot of the tone comes from. So you could basically get a number of different sounding EQs out of one box if you were to pair it with a bunch of different preamps, you know, like tube versus solid state, etc. I thought this was a cool idea, so I wanted to build one. And I decided to go with the mid-band version of the Poltec EQ because I had never built one before. I thought it would be interesting to see how it works. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to be doing that, why don't I make a few changes, just uh, minor stuff that I thought was important. Uh, for example, I, I don't know off the top of my head uh, how many frequency choices there are with the Poltec uh, mid-band EQ, but got quite a few with this thing. And, and I'll run through that in this video. We'll listen to it, and I'll, uh, I'll show you some things about what it can do, and we'll talk about the sound. But uh, before that... Um, some of the things that I did that were different were I put a variable bandwidth control on each of the bands, which in the original Poltec, there was only um, bandwidth control for the mid. And then there was only three uh, frequency controls. One was uh, treble boost, mid cut, and then you had bass boost. I also added in a variable treble cut with a couple frequencies to pick from and a low cut. So it has more features than a, you know, a stock uh, Poltec MIDI EQ. Let's talk about just uh, real briefly some of the pitfalls with this type of design. I think uh, the number one pitfall for me is the the output. It is, you know, it's kind of weird because the pro is also the con. So you have to use a quarter inch cable in, th in this case. I don't know how Thermionic Culture did it with theirs, but on mine I found that uh, this worked the best. So I, I have a quarter inch output, it's unbalanced, there's no output transformer in this box. And you take that cable and it goes to um, the DI input on a mic preamp. If you didn't have a DI input on your preamp, you could use a DI box to achieve the same thing. So the reason why it's a pitfall is because this quarter inch cable is a source of high frequency loss. The longer the cable, the more high frequency loss is involved. So you're going to want to keep that cable real short. In this case, it's three feet. I keep it in my rack and I've been using it for about eight years because it's good. I mean, I love it. It sounds great on vocals. I like it on snare drum a lot, actually, uh, specifically for uh, some of these lower frequencies that I created for the for the treble boost. It's like a, a mid boost in a sense. And I know that that's not what the original Poltec had. One other pitfall is uh, it doesn't really have a good way to, to bypass the signal. There is no true bypass on this. I tried to do a little bypass switch here, which didn't work out. And then later on, I thought about how I could make a bypass and I never actually did it because I didn't care to spend that kind of time uh, designing it and making it. There's another way around it, and it's in Pro Tools with uh, additional signal routing. So does it need to be done? Eh, I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> it's definitely another pitfall. There is a lot of pros to it, and that's what we're going to get into right now. Since this is a mono EQ, I just have a mono version of a stereo track that's going to be going through this. So this is actually part of a track that I recorded and mixed for Desperate Icons. We're just going to run that through so I can turn some knobs.
Okay, so here's just a cool thing. I'm going to play around with some of the color settings on the preamp to make the EQ sound different, because really, the EQ doesn't have much of a sound of its own. It's virtually neutral. That was pretty extreme. Steady hand, bloodshot eyes, or taking the long way home. How would you like me now? How would you like me? How would you like me now? Whoa. How would you like me now? How would you like me So as you can see, it's a very powerful tone shaping tool. I find it uh, especially really nice when you combine it with another equalizer, you know, and oftentimes I'll use one of my channel strips to do that. But just going to say briefly, uh, on the back panel of this thing is an XLR jack, which is an input, and that's a 600 ohm input. So it's designed to take a line level input from a recording interface in order to make this thing operate. And then it's, I used solder inductors that were custom designed for this thing. The input transformer is a Jensen. Thanks again for watching, guys. If you liked my weird creation, then please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to try to make something like this on your own, you know, just take a look at the schematics online for a poll test.